Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with an update video. And if you guys have seen any of what's going on lately, as you saw in yesterday's video, we had a little bit of our first vlog, and I hope you guys really enjoyed that. And here we are, back-to-back -back Zoro days. Uh, we were able to go undefeated on the previous video, and then we ended up top A at the half at the case tournament hosted by Pro Play Games. Now, <laughs> I think it's really interesting when I can make this deck profile because I can give you guys an insider of what happened that day, how the event went on, and and just my opinions on the whole thing and the whole ordeal. So here goes. To my understanding, and this is going to sound really funny, if it was a if, if I was aware that it was a case tournament, first of all, I woke up unaware that it was a case tournament. <laughs> but since PPG is my Saturday locals, I was on my way there anyways. Usually our local starts at 2. So I wake up from a phone call from my brother after a long night from the uh, previous night, and he says, bro, the tournament is actually starting two hours early. You got to get here. And I, he basically calls me 20 minutes before the tournament starts. I fly over as fast as I can. I think I got there like five minutes late. But fortunately, they hold the tournament not only for me, but for other players that were unaware of what happened. Uh, so at that time, I didn't have really wake up with enough time to do anything besides get ready, um, you know, close on, do all, you know, the hygiene things. But I didn't get to change my deck. I didn't get to do any, any sort of additions or subtractions. So the deck that you saw in yesterday's video is the deck that you'll see today. But today I'm going to be going in depth to why I made those choices as opposed to in the previous video where I just skimmed over it. Um, it ended up going really well in the tournament. I wasn't expecting to do well. There was a lot of green at the tournament. So once I sat down and I saw the player base, I knew I was I was doomed from the start. I played against two greens. It went well. <laughs> uh, and then I played against multiple red players uh, and I think one Kaido and one blue as well. And then at the end was the blue purple crocodile. was six rounds of Swiss. And I only lost to Jonathan's deck, which was shown previously this week. And then I lost to him again in top eight. We rematched and it was just unlucky rubber ducky, guys. But with that being said, let's get to the Zoro list. Um... There's a lot of weird cards in here, uh, and uh, at the end I will explain what I would change for them and what additions I would make to the deck. But basically, it, the deck ran super duper clean. It worked exactly how I wanted it to, and the thought process was the same thought process that I've used for other decks. But for Zoro specifically, it's a little bit weirder. Previously, I've said, you know, in my tips and tricks and deck building videos, that you want to be anywhere between eight to 12 like 2k counters in your deck seems like the maximum in a zoro deck i felt like i just decided i decided i wanted to go heavier on the combo power or the counters because i wanted to be able to just maintain my board maintain my zoro maintain my luffy because if those cards already went in which usually they deal damage on coming in because of their big stat lines or they deal with the board then they let me to they let me get double value as in when they become unrested on my turn i get to either clear the board again or go for life with my Dawn this time. So I just want to start off by by doing this deck and explaining. Obviously, we know Zoro is in a weird spot. I think aggro is very difficult in this game more than anything. You can't just play, pick up a Zoro deck and just expect to win with it versus the skilled pilots. Uh, there's a lot of intricacies that you have to do knowing when to attack, what to attack, and how much Dawn to attack. There's a lot of math involved in the red deck more than other decks. Um, although this, this math is kind of like passed over because of the fact that people are like well three cause zoro just kind of fixes all your problems and you just curve them out and it's gg ha 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 xd really isn't like that um you have to do a lot of little small interactions in order to get the advantage that you need because your deck really doesn't have draw powers it doesn't have uh, a lot of plus so you have to be really ahead of what you're doing and thinking about a couple turns ahead and what you're going to be casting down the line so with that being said let's get right into the deck profile i know that was kind of a long intro but kind of had to get all of that out of the way so here we have i'm going to start off with just the combo power cards first and i'm going to show you all the 2k counters that i play in my deck which by the way is quite a bit so i play four of otama at this point in time otama has basically become a staple in red minusing 2k power on a character is huge being a 2k counter is huge recyclable by yuta huge it makes your pistol extend from six to eight which is a big threshold uh, and it also makes it easier to clear some cards on the board while also making sure that Nico Robin can get in there whenever she wants versus smaller minions in the early game. This is a good early game card, good late game card. And it's one of the reasons that Law is even good because you get to play her down and then bounce her and then also use her as combo. Uh, so that's kind of, you know, I know that's a little bit of a different thing, but we've all expected how good Otama is. And I think by now you've experienced it. You know, we see a 1-0 and we think to ourselves, maybe this card isn't good, but that effect... Funnily enough, it's just very, 
very powerful and allows you to do a lot of crazy things in many decks. For our next 2k counter, we I've decided to play 4 of Gordon. And just as a, a heads up, any of these 2k counters are interchangeable for any cards that you would like. These are just the ones that I chose to pick at this time, but I think you just want to go with a heavy 2k counter. The reason I chose Gordon is because with a 3, he kind of can swing. Zoro puts him to 4, and with just a 1 Dawn investment, he becomes a 5, so he's a threat. He clears early boards, and he also curates my hand. Funnily enough, if I I played him very often, bottom decking cards that I knew wouldn't come up in the matchup, or at least wouldn't come up in three to four turns, just to get a couple more draws in. And, and sometimes this often draw, uh, drew me into lethal as I bottom deck a card, drew into a Zoro, drew into a Luffy, drew into a Shanks, and now we're gaming for the following turns. I have this big threat that I can go ahead and finish the game off with. So Gordon really enjoyed him, allowing me to keep some sort of hand advantage. And again, the 2k counter is nice. The most offensive 2k counter that we play in this deck is Brook. Brook gets, lets you double dip on Dawn. Once again, the 3k stat line is an offensive stat line, and it has the same effect, uh, same stat line as Gordon. He's a 2-3 with a 2k counter, so just the stat lines alone lines up really well. The thing is, Brook, when he comes in, he uses the 2 Dawn that you use to summon him and plays it on your Zoro, a character, whomstever he wants, and that lets you kind of double dip on Dawn, which this deck doesn't naturally do. Um, so Brook is one of the most unplayable 2k counters that you have and because of that I wanted to max out on him as I want to max out on the amount of aggressive cards I have in my deck. Rounding off our 2k's, I do play 2 of Sanji and honestly I am pleasantly surprised with this card. This card is better than I thought just because of the game style that is happening at my locals. A lot of people just chuck 5 at your face and they kind of ignore what's going on in the game but when you people are chucking 6's uh, sevens like you can combo really easily with these cards but you kind of start losing hand advantage sanji uh, lets you play a very risky game where you are taking your life and drawing from life and also clearing the board as he becomes an eight with one dawn under zoro that is nothing to scoff at 8k almost kills anything unless there's a blast breath and this two drop can just start clearing sevens or eights and if i combo with an otama this can almost kill literally anything in the game so I very much enjoyed Sanji, and in a very in a slower matchup, as you guys saw in the blue-purple list, he had to clear this card over and over again because this card would allow me to net advantage that he would be denying by not hitting my leader and hitting my board. So Sanji plays a really interesting game where people decide to not hit leader, which in red is understandable. He lets me just hit myself and get that double draw, which is really, really nice. Similar to like why Whitebeard is theoretically good because of the double draw feature, but that's a whole other discussion. Uh, as for my last 2k, I played a 1 of Winter Luffy. It's a good card. I only have one of this card. <laughs> so I, I, I'm not sure if I would play more, funnily enough. Even at a 1, he felt okay. I rarely, very rarely summon him that, because I rarely ever drew him. Uh, if I played Nami, I would rarely look for this card. So I barely saw any play in my deck. I can't really tell you how much he came up in playtesting. But I also wouldn't mind just this being another Sanji. It feels like it would probably be a little bit more leaner, a little bit more correct. But it was nice to just play the winner. And one time when I comboed my opponent out, uh, he was swinging for game at uh, at 9. And I had um, two, two Ks in hand and a 1K. And I went 1K, 2K, winner. <laughs> so that kind of is an added bonus uh, to the card, which is really, really cool. And that rounds up our 2Ks. If you guys didn't see, we have 12 plus 3. We've got 15 2Ks. That's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, but funnily enough, if people are hitting me for five, the 2Ks don't feel that great, I must say. And then on for our searchers, our combo starter, not our combo starters, not our top end, but kind of like the mid-range portion of our deck, we've got the one, the only, Nami. Uh, man, this was a struggle to get all four, but we have finally accomplished the one piece, which is achieving four Namis in our deck. Uh, this card is unbalanced. I'm pretty sure there's no one that would disagree that you have to play four of this in your deck. This card turns sideways all the time, checking for five. And as they clear it, it's just so nice because I just play Yuta, grab it back, play Nami again, and it's just so powerful. I'd really dip, double dipping on the value of this deck. Um, and then for our one cause bloggers, I feel by this point you guys know I do be loving one cause bloggers. And Chopper, he be chopping. He's a cute, he's a cute little straw hat. He's searchable. He's a one drop. And that's the one thing that makes this one draw better than maybe the Law and the Blue Purple Crocodile deck. They can't search their blocker. I can search mine. I can recur mine. Uh, so making Chopper very, very good in combination with Nami's, in combination with the Yudas, which you'll see later into the deck. I play 
two of monkey d luffy the uh sr from the set now this card has always performed for me i everyone that i talk to kind of doesn't really enjoy this card this card can necessarily be more of this winner luffy theoretically but that makes your curve a little bit higher it could be more sanji's it could be whatever you want it to be but for me i really do enjoy the fact that i get to play my cards and then whenever I choose to invest into this Luffy, I see a strike character on board. I see the perfect turn. I put the two down into Luffy and I have six just by himself. No added bonus just by putting one under Zoro. And that just feels good to me. I don't know what, how else to explain it. This card gets to literally combo out of almost anything in the, in the mirror match, which is really nice. I see a lot of people leave two Dawn up for the Red Hawk. And once I see two Don up versus a red player, I know the Red Hawk's coming. If this card is on the board, all I have to do is just suck two Don under it. And now he's immune to Red Hawk. Or it's just, it gets around anything. He can also get around the Jet Pistols in security if you're playing around it. Uh, you'll go, or in life, sorry. You'll go ahead and play a card, suck here, put an extra Don here, one on Zoro. Now he's seven. He can't get Jet Pistol. The card you summon on board, you put a Don in it. It cannot get Jet Pistol. You can just play around all of the things that can blow you out of the game. The red bear match is really intricate. That's why I guess I mentioned that. But because of the red mirror match, I really did enjoy Monkey D. Luffy. The only thing that sucks about him is that with a 3k base, he is very susceptible to Nico Robin. And speaking of, very, very strong card. Uh, most of the games that I felt like I was in a super winning position are the games that obviously I'm going first. Red feels like it always wants to go first. Opening Nami on one, Nico on three we're gaming right and then i have the rest of my hands to play around if i have an otama if i have a law if i have anything that of that nature whatever you summon is getting eaten by my nico robin and just because i play so many 2ks it's gonna be very difficult for you to clear this and then once you put anything onto the board she's just gonna eat it again she's just double ripping because she's just the board control master of this deck recurrable searchable 1k counter uh obviously her one downfall is that she is four instead of five but thanks to zoro She's just naturally five. You put one Dawn for her natural effect, and she's six. And six is a real number. And for our last 1K counter slash, you know, combo piece, not our top end, we've got Truflaga Law. We've got Law, our homie Law. Uh, this is the one from the Film Starter deck. Uh, it's just, it has the Otama effect on play, which is nice. It has a 1K counter, which is nice. Four for five, which is really nice because one Dawn on Zora. Now, this is just a six. You put one Dawn on this, it's a seven. And those are just real numbers in this deck. You have to know when to hit for seven, when to hit for six. And Law can kind of reach really, really high just on his own. If you can pair this card, if this card's already on the board, you play an Otama. This card can swing almost over anything in the game. Uh, and that's kind of what this deck does. You want to be a low to the ground deck. Your curve doesn't want to be too high, right? except for your top end, and then you just want to have a really low low base that searches your deck and and combos it out. And that was my thought process behind it. So those are, I don't even know what to call these. I guess this would be like the middle. This would be the meat of the deck. This was like the bun. Here's the meat. And then I don't want to say this is the top bun, but I guess this is like the condiments. This is like the sprinkle on top. This is the finishers. The sauce, maybe? Yeah, I'm, I'm down to call it the sauce. Uh, so we've got four of the Rush Zoro. Yeah, yeah, card's just good. <laughs> uh, card is just really, really good. There's nothing to say. I can search him at any time. He can always thread in six from any point in time, just coming from hand, thread into the board, thread into the face. It's really easy to control this card on the board because once my opponent has a uh, board sideways, this just eats the board really easily, and I can defend it with choppers as well as my 2k counters, and we're good to go. This card gets to turn sideways. I get to put more Dawn on him, and we're gaming at high speeds. So, searchable. Stat line is crazy. There's just not much I can say about this guy. It's absolutely insane. Then I'm playing three Yutas. Or Uta, she has been really, really good in this deck. I'm not going to lie. I was not a fan of playing it uh, at heavy, heavy counts. But the more I play this deck, the more that I've noticed that I can bait people into clearing my Namis. And then just recycle my Namis. And then I get to, for 5 Dawn, get to do like a whole other turn. And normally, that is a really accessible timeline, right? Because I go 1, 3, 5. And then on the following, when I'm at 7, I go boom into Yuta Nami. And I can grab more combo power, jet pistols guard points or things like that so she really allows for that uh in the mirror matchup it is a 5k with a with the zoro so it is an attacking number it also allows me to recycle my choppers 
my Zoros, my Nico Robins, which that rarely ever happens, but it gets to pick the three of some of the best cards in your deck, which is Nami, Zoro, and Chopper. And just because it can do that, it's just too much. It gets you a lot of advantage in one single card. There was one game when we were grinding it out. It was me versus a red player, and we were just out of cards in hand. Our boards were just completely demolished. And I top deck U uh, Uda, and I go Uda for Nami, Nami Surge, and Nami Surge into Zoro. And this one Uda put three minions on the board literally by herself. And all of a sudden, I went from uh, equal game state to you just got blown out and you just lost the game. And my Zoro didn't even swing. It just had to stay standing. And then on my following turn, when I had my Dawn available, I put my Dawn in the correct spots. And it just, that just closes the game. Very, very good card. And then one of the wildest cards in the game, we've got the five drop unblockable Luffy. This card is bananas, man. This card lets you do a lot of silly things. And uh, summoning this card on curve on five feels really good because it's very difficult to clear and easy to uh, protect. And then once you get to your turn back with this card that now just hit your opponent for like six and probably cleared a minion or a character, you get to now put Dawn on it, make it unblockable, and then just keep chucking, clearing, going phase, doing whatever it wants. This card is a menace. This card is an absolute menace. It's searchable. It is just very, very strong. And then for our last piece of top end, Shanks. This card overperformed for me. I am not even joking. I know that sounds like cope, guys, but this card felt really, really good. And the fact that I play Gordon, this is one of the reasons that I really enjoy Gordon, is that if at times I notice that in this matchup, Shanks isn't going to do anything, I just bottom deck Shanks. And he's gone. And it's fine. We're chilling. We don't need Shanks for this matchup. We win anyways. But for the matchup versus Green Kid, Law, uh, into these more control value decks, Shanks demolishes them. Because all they do is make their big guy and hide it behind a bunch of weenies. And Shanks just says, nice deck, dude. Yeet. And goes right for the weenies. Now, by the time that they've gone and implemented this play, they've basically burnt out their entire hand. And Shanks gets to clear whatever they want. They can never stop him. And it just becomes kind of really easy to calm, uh, to protect this guy. Your 2k counters on a 10k body, and if we allow one Dawn up to guard point, this card's almost unkillable. It's very similar to the Kaido in the purple deck. This card gets to stick and just chunk, chunk, chunk. Clear whatever he wants or hit face. He's, he's swinging for 11. That's, that's a lot. So I very much like them, uh, and I was actually pleasantly surprised. The only thing that sucks about him is obviously he's not searchable, in the matchup versus Blue Purple Crocodile, this card was uh, essential. It felt like in that matchup, I need to play more Shanks because it needs it gets around all Sunday and it gets to really deal with what I wanted. Like these cards, all five here, these were the most important cards in that matchup. And even drawing them all and in multiples, I still heavily struggled. Uh, and then that's all of our non-combo cards right here. We have one, two, three, four, five, eight, and we have 12 non-combo cards. So hopefully our 2K counters kind of like help us out uh, and get there and balance out the amount of non-combo power cards that we have in hand. And then for our spells or events, we've got three guard points. I went with guard point as opposed to uh, Radical Beam or Hawk. Hawk is really heavy. Hawk is a really good card in the mirror match, but it seems to fail everywhere else. And because of that, I'm out. <laughs> uh, most of the time you can play around it and it's really easy to, to play around it. Once my opponent keeps two done up, I just make everything on my board above 4k. They can never red hawk me, so they never get the double dip of the red hawk, which is really, really good for me. The only times that red hawk really seems to connect is cards like Otama and Chopper, which there's no real way that I can make those cards live at any point in time. And if it kills an Otama, I really don't mind it. Uh, but it's very easy to play around and not necessarily something I enjoy uh, to play unless I'm playing the mirror match. If there was a side deck, there is an argument to play red hawk, but I just wanted to play something a little bit more consistent. And that's why I wanted Guard Point, which at every point in time was just a 3K. And I can always rely on 3K. With that being said, Radical Beam is also really solid. And something that I might have to test in the future, going from 3 to 4 is a big deal. Uh, as well as the fact that it is searchable just like Guard Point. And it has a really good uh, effect in Trigger. So the only thing that limits it is you have to be under two life to really get its bonus effect but does that really matter with the amount of 2ks and i can aggressively take damage with sanji's or let you hit me early to get advantage i'm not sure oh thank you spirit fingers appreciate it <laughs> in the middle of a video uh and we'll go ahead and uh round up one of our last events as a round table and for our final event which this was the most underperforming of my events and cards in my entire deck, uh, Jet Pistol. 
I only played three. I feel like four is a lot, especially since it's searchable. The argument for four is that you want it in your life, but I don't want to play a game where I'm trying to like crutch on my life or use my life as a bonus. So I just went ahead and decided to go with three uh, jet pistols and it worked absolutely fine. My hand never clogged on it. Remember, these cards are also considered just non-counter cards. So you're adding from your fifth, uh, your I believe it was 15. Now you're all the way up to 19, 20 cards out of a 50 card deck. You're starting to get there and it's going to start getting you at the end of the day. So I think just starting off, my one chain would already be pumping up here if I so wanted to, or this can also be a shanks. Uh, as much as that sounds like cope, guys, the, the biggest change I would like to make in this deck is find a way to play another shanks. Uh, most of the deck felt insanely solid. Like, I wouldn't change anything there. You could probably make these beams. The pistols felt fine. It could be double shanks. This lineup felt absolutely perfect to me. Didn't feel like I would make a single change there. And the only other change I would make is make this monkey another Sanji. But other than that, guys, I think the deck is as close to perfection as possible. My name is Chef, and this is my kitchen. Uh, this is what I've been able to cook up. And unfortunately, until the next set comes out, I think this is where I'm going to leave Red at. I think this is where it goes until side decks get announced, or if they get announced, this would be my Red deck until then, as it is takes over the mid-range, takes over the early game, and it's kind of like... It, it deals versus a very wide board state as opposed to hyper uh, specifying. So I hope you guys liked the video. Thanks so guys. Thanks so much for coming out, supporting me. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for the follows and subscribers. It's been a beautiful journey. Have a wonderful Friday. And as always, guys, one P. I don't know where I'm going with this. Bye.